We are in the next unit and we're going to be talking about the basics of geometry. So we're just laying the groundwork for the rest of the year. And a lot of these things you will know and understand conceptually, but what I need you to pay attention to are the details of notation and the exact definitions. So it's important that you take good notes and understand all the particulars. All right, first of all, points. Points have no size. And you've seen them represented by a dot. Okay, and then we usually name them by a capital letter. So I could call this point A or another point B. And then we have lines. Lines extend indefinitely, so they go forever in both directions. They have no thickness or width. And we, the way we represent them with notation is we are going to make sure you draw arrows at the end. So make sure you're careful with that. If you don't draw arrows, it'll look like a segment. And then the way we name them, identify them, is with either a lowercase script letter, so you see how this line is depicted by the lowercase m, or um, by two capital letters, and those capital letters are actually points that are on the line. So if I have point A and B on that line, I would name this AB. And notice when I name the line AB, that I have a line with arrows over the top of it. So pay attention to that as well when you're labeling things. And then we have a plane, which is a flat surface, and that flat surface extends indefinitely in all directions, and it has no thickness. Um, it's often represented by a parallelogram, so you can see these blue parallelograms. That's how you'll see them in the book quite often. And we name them by either a capital script letter so it's hard to see that this is a script letter, but it would be a little more fancy, like capital A. Or we can use three points that are on that plane. And notice that those points are not all on the same line. They're not in a row. So I can name this plane BMT. Okay, so this would be plane a or plain BMT. Oh, a lot of times, too, we'll use planes when we are using uh, cubes and boxes and things like that. So I might have the plane of this top surface of the box. Okay. Or you could have the front of the box be a plane. All right, and then space. Space, when we say space, it's just a boundless three-dimensional set of all points. So if, if any time you see that word, it just means all um, three-dimensional space that we're talking about. And then here are two other very important words, coplanar. Coplanar, that prefix co, if you think about other words that have the prefix co, like um, co-chair or co-captain, that means you share that position, right? If you are co-chair, two people share the position of chairperson. Um, if you are co-captain, two people share that position of captain. So if you're coplanar, those are going to be points, two or more points, that lie on the same plane, okay, so that they share the same plane. So I want you to think co means share. So for example, um, in this diagram, A and B and G are all on that top plane, A, G, and B, are all in that top plane of that cube. In fact, so is F, so we could say all of those are coplanar. And there are several other ways, we, other points that are coplanar. I'm just giving you one example. So having said that, now that we're looking at the word collinear, co means share and linear, so that means a line. So it's going to be points that, sh that uh, share the same line. So and you can replace that with share if that makes more sense to you. So for example, in this uh, cube, if I extend this, this is a line. E and C are collinear. They share the same line. Now moving on to a segment, a line segment, 
we could say either line segment AB or so a lot of times we just say segment. Um, we write it as AB, do you see this right here? AB with a bar over it, do you notice how it does not have arrows? So that's why it's so important to put arrows when you mean a line and no arrows when you mean a line segment. And that consists of endpoints. So we don't have arrows because a segment stops, starts and stops at its two endpoints. Okay, and then all points on AB, um, segment AB led between them. Okay, another uh, thing to note, we say that we could call that AB. You could also reverse it. It doesn't matter which order you write those points in. So just keep that in mind as well. Whereas when we have a ray, the ray AB is written like this. Do you see how it looks like an arrow? So we have a line, but only one arrow on one side, not on both sides. Okay, so that is going to have, a ray is going to have one endpoint, and then it will extend in one direction. What's important is that the end point, when you are naming it, um, that end point has to come first. So this ray, this top ray is ray AB, but this one down here, the green one that I'm tracing out, this has an endpoint of B and goes forever in the A direction. So this would be ray BA. So make sure you're doing you're labeling that correctly. Also note that our arrows over when we label A B and B A, the arrows always go in the same direction. So it does not have to go left, even though in the diagram it's it's going left. And then the other thing that we're going to talk about on this slide is opposite rays. Okay, so notice that point C, here's point C, it's on the line AB, it's in between A and B, and then CA, here's the ray, CA, it's going to the left, and CB, CB is the ray that's pointing to the right, those are what we call opposite rays. So notice that opposite rays have to have the same endpoint. And, they're, and the rays have to be on the same line. Okay, they kind of go in opposite directions. So I'm going to pause right here or stop the video here and then continue on with some more definitions in the next video.